The Intel Pentium MMX is one of the best processors for building a DOS retro gaming PC. It can also cover some early Windows 95 games, but DOS is really the main strength of the CPU. It has something that other CPUs do not have, which makes it very flexible, meaning you can have one machine to cover a wide range of games. The time period when the Pentium MMX launched is really interesting. Performance just exploded. Within a few years, we went from a Pentium running at only 60 megahertz to a much faster Pentium 2 that can do 450 megahertz. And we saw similar growth with graphics cards going from 2D accelerated graphics to the first 3 d effects Voodoo and then later the Voodoo 2 in SLI. So with this processor, I recommend stick with DOS, but here you have a wide range of DOS games and you can also install Windows 95 for some easier networking and folder management. And if you're sticking with 2D titles like point and click adventure games, you will have a beautiful experience. But stay away from more demanding 3D games. Although the system requirements often mention the Intel Pentium, the experience is not that great. You're much better off playing it on a Pentium 2 or a Pentium 3. So what makes the Pentium MMX so special? Well, compared to the Pentium Classic, we have, for example, double the CPU cache. That means at the same clock speed, we have higher performance. In some games, the MMX 166 is a little bit behind the Pentium Classic running at 200 megahertz, but in other benchmarks, it's faster. So in average, you can say that the Pentium MMX 166 is on the level of a Pentium Classic 200. It consumes less power, which is always nice. It introduced split voltages with the input output using 3.3 volts like the Pentium Classic, but the core running at a lower 2.8 volts. And of course, the Pentium MMX introduced 57 new CPU instructions. Now for DOS gaming, they are not that important, but some games under Windows take advantage of this. But the real highlight and what makes the Pentium MMX so special is the ability to slow it down. Now, I keep saying on the channel, slow is good. And that is because many DOS games are speed sensitive. And there are a heap of games out there that people are actually not aware that they are speed sensitive. Strike Commander is a good example. Now, you might want to play it silky smooth with high frame rates, but if you do that, you will run into issues with the game. For example, if you're shooting missiles, the faster your processor is, the less chance of the missiles actually hitting the target. So you will find the game really difficult to play. And there are many games out there that have little, little bugs like this, where at first everything seems to be fine, but as you keep playing, something just feels off. Could be the difficulty or could be some other timing glitch. And on this sheet, we can see the magic of the Pentium MMX. Now there's a lot going on, so let me explain. Gerwin, he released a utility called setmul, which allows you to disable the CPU cache to slow down the machine. So for example, at full speed, we are getting 144.2 FPS in the 3D bench benchmark but with the CPU disabled, we're getting only 35.2. He discovered that with the Pentium MMX, you get a couple of extra registers that when configured, you can slow the machine down to some other in-between values. So on a Pentium Classic, you can only hit full speed and level one cache off. So you only get these two speeds, nothing in between, but with the Pentium MMX, you get much finer values that lets you dial in the speed perfectly. This sheet, it's on my website. I coined it 136 in one CPU benchmark sheet. You print it out, run a automatic batch file. All you have to do is press, uh, write down the value, press escape, write down the value, press escape, and so on. You do this twice. The first time with the motherboard cache enabled in the BIOS, and then you run it again with the motherboard cache turned off in the BIOS and you will get some lower speeds. Here you can go all the way down to 13.4 FPS in 3D Bench. And for your reference, there are some comparison values down below. So 30.4, that's pretty much a 386 with 33 megahertz. But you can also 
achieve like a 486 running at 66 megahertz. We're looking for a value of around 46, so you can achieve that by using this configuration here. Let's check out a few speed sensitive games. Here we have a classic Test Drive 3. It came out in 1990 and it just runs well too fast on this Pentium. I believe this game never received a patch to fix this issue. And yeah, in terms of playing this game optimally, you wanna have something like an average 386. The next game is Comanche Maximum Overkill from Nova Logic. And this is an interesting game. Now, if you have a 386, thinking, oh, well, I'm covered with speed sensitive games. Well, this game will be too slow. So it launched in 1992 with some really impressive voxel graphics and it ran too slow on a 386, but too fast on this Pentium. Now for this game, a patch was released. There's a speed option in the options and it will basically cap the FPS and slow it down. And that works really well. We have another speed sensitive game coming up. The main game of this video where we spend a little bit more time playing some of those classic games. So let's have a look at the test system that we're using today. This is the main board, Socket 7 from Gigabyte. We have the model number here. It's a GA586 ATX. Beautiful board, very retro friendly with four ISA slots for those DOS sound cards with four PCI slots. Two ID floppy controller is here. Here goes the CPU. Very important. You have some dip switches here to configure the voltage, the front side bus, the clock speed and so on. This board is really well documented. All the downloads, the BIOS updates, the manuals are on my website. Links down below in the video description. So I like to share all the resources. It has yeah, two types of memory. We get the older style 72 pin SIM memory, supports fast page and EDO, but also the more modern SD RAM. For RAM, we have a 32 gigabyte SD RAM module. Most DOS games are fine with this capacity, but there are some games out there where this is even too much. So here you might be better off using some SIM memory, 72 pin and go for a lower capacity four or eight megabytes. The ESS audio drive is what I picked for this project. It's plug and play, so it works beautifully with Jace Fox Unisound plug and play drivers, which initializes the card with a single executable and sets all the mixes to a useful value. And in this video, didn't have any issues. This card is extremely compatible and sounds awesome. For graphics, we have a PCI graphics card from Diamond, here's the BIOS version 2.02 .02 with the S3 Trio 64 graphics chip. Highly recommended for DOS, very compatible and good performance. It is the Diamond Stealth 64. For storage, we have the usual combination of a GoTek USB floppy emulator. I need this to boot MS-DOS and then partition format the hard drive and make it bootable. And we're using a 32 gigabyte SSD in combination with the StarTech SATA2 ID converter. I did try a SanDisk with 64 gigabytes at first, but when I ran the auto detect in the BIOS, the machine would freeze. So I guess this machine can't handle 64 gigabytes, but it had no issues seeing the 32 gigabyte drive. And this is the CPU cooler I'm using. It's a model from StarTech. I'm not sure if it's still available. I bought it many, many years ago and it works beautifully with Socket 7 machines. Setting up the machine was straightforward. I'm using two resources that you can download from my website. The first one is the MS-DOS starter pack, which sets you up with a boot menu and drivers for CD-ROM and mouse. And then of course, the DOS benchmark pack. Here are some benchmarks, 141.7 in 3D Bench, Chris's 3D Benchmark 109.5, PC Player Benchmark 45.2, Doom we're getting 73.5 and Quake 42 FPS. So today's classic game we are checking out is called Epic. 
It launched in 1992 by Digital Image Design out of England and they made games such as Robocop 3, also TFX and there's another game F29 Retaliator which is a flight simulator and a lot of the 3D engine and the DNA and the assets ended up in Epic. Now Epic it's a yeah 3D space combat simulator heavily influenced by Wing Commander and also Battlestar Galactica with a lot of the the ships and talking about the fleet uh, reminding me a lot of that TV show. This story is about the humans having to flee because the sun is about to go supernova. There's a problem however, the escape path is in the region that the Rexon and alien race control. And humans, they do reach out, but the Rexons don't believe the story, so they don't grant passage, which means the humans have to fight their way through. We have, of course, lots of missions in space, but for me personally, much more impressive are the missions on the planet. So here we get beautiful 3D graphics and you zoom around, you've got some sort of an afterburner and you have briefings that tell you what's going on. And on paper, it's very similar to Wing Commander. So you have your mission briefings and you launch and you've got a map and everything and you can toggle between weapons, but it just really fails to, uh, I don't know what the word is, to uh, build the same excitement and get you as much invested as Wing Commander does. Part of the reason is you are confused. At least I was confused most of the time. The briefings, they sort of give you a quick summary of what's going on and then you start the mission. You do have a radar and some sort of a map, but it doesn't really highlight where the objectives are. So you need to figure things out. For example, on the planet, there are some sort of roads uh, on, the, on the ground. And if you follow them, they lead you to the strategic objectives. And if you don't know that, you're just flying around, running out of fuel. Once you know what to do, the missions are actually really easy. And that's a big difference between Wing Commander and this one. There's almost no replayability because the levels are so easy once you know where all the objectives are based. You have no real reason to play it again or play it a different way. This game has beautiful 3D polygon graphics. We have support for different sound cards. We are just using the regular Sound Blaster option, but it does support the Roland, for example, and there's some music as well. The speed sensitivity is annoying. Something around an average 386 seems to be optimal, but even here, the game will sometimes run too fast, sometimes too slow. I rather have the game run too slow than too fast because then it's really difficult to hunt down those last few enemies. You can buy this game legally on GOG. It is bundled, the first game Epic with the second game Inferno. I haven't tried Inferno yet. So to install it on the retro PC, just install it on your modern computer, copy the folder across. There is an executable to configure the sound options and that's it. Type in Epic and off you go. So all in all, if you're looking for a game similar to Wing Commander, you will be disappointed. But if you like 3D space shooters and want something different, maybe a game that's a little bit on the unknown side, this is definitely worth checking out and you will have definitely some entertainment. So what are my thoughts? I think you can't go wrong with the Pentium MMX for a really awesome DOS retro gaming PC. If you see a completely assembled machine for sale for a fairly, yeah, an okay average price, you're not gonna find a bargain, I think, those, those days are in the past. But if you find something that's reasonably priced, I would not hesitate. There's so much you can do. The ability to dial in the speed going from um, a fast 386 to, yeah, full speed is absolutely amazing. And that means you can play a wide range of games, but you can play them well without those speed sensitive issues. DOS games at 640 by 480 might be a little bit too much, at least if you want those high frame rates. For example, I tried Duke Nukem 3D and also some of the benchmarks and you will definitely get less than 60 FPS. 
but it doesn't mean it's unplayable. And remember, this is the 166 megahertz version. You can get faster ones with 200 and even 233 megahertz, and they perform much better. You can install Windows 95. I think the main focus should be MS-DOS, but Windows 95 has a nice user interface. You can do networking and it just makes your life easier with the folder management and so on. In terms of playing games under Windows, very, very early 3D titles might be okay, but I see the CPU more suitable for those early Windows point and click adventure games, for example. Once you play something newer like Blood 2 or GL Quake or Shogo, this processor is just not cutting it. As for the platform, you will definitely need a Socket 7 motherboard. The good news here is, well, it's not Super Socket 7, and that's high, highly in demand. People chasing Super Socket 7 with AGP 100 megahertz frontside buses, and of course, support for the AMD K6 2 Plus and 3 Plus mobile CPUs. So looking for the regular Socket 7 with PCI only, you might get a lower price. Depending on the board, they're also really nice to work with. This one fits into an ATX case. Compatible with ATX power supplies, we get USB, PS2, also onboard storage and heap of ISA slots. So this is a board really beautiful to work with. So the Pentium MMX gets a huge thumbs up. This is one of the best retro PCs that you can have. So much fun games you can play to bring back those happy memories and yeah. Now enough from me, I wanna hear from you. What are your thoughts on the Pentium MMX using SETMAL and those secret registers to really dial in the speed? I think this is absolutely beautiful and when I saw the announcements on Vogons that they have discovered uh, these features, I was really happy and my main DOS machine, I had an AMD processor in there, but yeah, I removed it. It's now got a Pentium MMX because it is just more flexible. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Lots of fun videos about old computers and classic games on this channel. And I shall see you soon with another one.